Hi, what? <laughs> kind of a weak one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> we want to talk about science in movies, natural disasters in movies, three natural disasters. They're always kind disasters. of fun, aren't they? Yes, they natural disasters. disasters. I love natural disasters. It's the unnatural disasters that I'm not a big fan of. You know, I'm, it's like this modernity just brings those unnatural disasters. Uh, I'm an old fashioned that way, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Organic. Organic, yeah. <laughs> So an asteroid, Armageddon, 1998. <laughs> the day after tomorrow. Saturn. Southern Ice Age. Ice Age. I have to run, run, the ice is coming. <laughs> oh no. That's, that's exactly how it happens. I think it's a documentary exactly. from the future. Yeah, it's found footage. And the last one, we're going to talk about a bunch of volcano movie disasters. Right, because which ones are there? All of a sudden there was a glut of them, right? Yes. There's like Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones. Yes. And that's like LA. LA. Erupts. Yeah. Okay. Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak. Pierce Brosnan. Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, and I guess it's kind of like a US Northwest Volcano, kind of Mount St. Helens type thing. And made for TV movie. The type of natural disasters that have caused mass extinctions in, in Earth's history. Right. right. So it's not like a local flood or you know, also like the super volcano movie really has a global effect more so than it's just like right. only LA is lost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing of value was lost. Yeah. It's just LA. So we can also learn some science through the movies about asteroids climate change, volcanoes, but we can also learn about the time where the movies were made. Yeah. So at first I was struck like re-watching Armageddon, how different this exact same movie would be if it were made today. So that's the 90s, the collapse of the USSR, no evil empire, America rules the world, a lot of patriotism, but like infantile childish patriotism that does not exist today anymore yeah. in the US. Now it's like angry uh, patriotism. I address you tonight not as the President of the United States. Space Force. We have the Air Force, we have the Space Force. Not as the leader of a country, but as a citizen of humanity. So I said, maybe we need a new force. We'll call it the Space Force. We are faced with the very gravest of challenges. And I was not really serious. And then I said, what a great idea. Maybe we'll have to do that. The human thirst for excellence, Notre soif humaine, knowledge, excellence et la connaissance. every step up the ladder of science, every adventurous reach into space, all of our combined modern technologies. And God bless. The United States. This is like pre-September 11, yeah. pre-Al-Qaeda, pre-ISIS, pre, you know, the, the, the US being divided into two separate nations. Yeah. There is like, ha ha, guys, yeah. <laughs> Harry, this is not funny. Ha ha, sex with underage well, girls. And I swear to God, she never told me her age. Ha <laughs> ha, sexual harassment. Woohoo! Is it just me or is Watts really hot? Yeah. So we have these new generation suits <laughs> with directional accelerant thrusters. You won't bounce like Neil Armstrong. Bear! This is all a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Not so much fun anymore. Well, the good guys right now would have worn MAGA hats. Yes. Like, yeah, those same guys. Those same are dudes, now like the oil drillers. <laughs> yeah. Pri like a, yeah. like personally owned, like privately owned by this guy, yes. just like a guy who owns uh, an oil company. He likes drilling for oil. Yeah, and the bad and the and the douchebags are the guys who want to preserve the environment. <laughs> what do you think they're so mad about, chick? Well, I think they feel that drilling for oil is an evil thing. You know how much diesel that clunker boat pumps out an hour? So the asteroid. It's humongous. Humongous. It's absurdly large. Bigger than the one that destroyed the, the dinosaurs. Much, much bigger. Okay. Yeah, like 10 times bigger, at least, in diameter. 
And what did that uh, asteroid cause back then? And what will this asteroid cause if Bruce Willis is not uh, fast enough to blow it up in space? The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs is like a few dozen miles in diameter that uh, had you know massive impact in where it landed in Yucatan Peninsula, so Mexico. Uh, and there was a, a kind of fallout, presumably, as it impacts, there's just a lot of stuff blown into the air, a lot of compounds that might be toxic and might cause some kind of nuclear winter. And the thinking now is that the impact also caused volcanic activity on the other side of the Earth. Ah, on the other side of the Earth. So the yeah. whole thing was rattled. The whole, exactly. The whole thing was rattled already. Uh, and so if it's like 10 times as large in diameter, then in volume it's... Uh, even bigger, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I I think, quick yeah. maths, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, you know, it's big. Well, basically, nobody's really important in that movie in the 90s for American eyes other than Americans. So you, you can see a difference between that and the day after tomorrow where America is much more humble yeah. and much more cooper, uh, cooperative. There are other nations involved, scientists from all over the world, now everybody knows that the U.S. produces like the, the, the lion's share of all the pollution and the greenhouse gases that will uh, kill whatever so many people in this movie and make the northern hemisphere inhabitable. Yeah. But in, in, in Armageddon, nobody cares about that. It's just drill, baby, drill. Yeah, yeah and uh, here's the exact opposite. Uh, mm. right, there's this, this figure also who kind of looks like Dick Cheney who is the bad guy now. And who's going to pay the price of the Kyoto Accord? It will cost the world's economy hundreds of billions of dollars. So the oil industry has uh, switched sides. It's yes. now on, on the side of the disaster. But, on the, but at the end of the movie, he becomes a good guy. He repents. He's been taught a lesson. We were wrong. I was wrong. Yes, oh, uh, half of the planet is uh, un uninhabitable, so I guess... You guys were right. Okay. Okay. Well, Can you blame him? Can you blame him? Come on. Jobs. They needed jobs. Yes. They needed jobs. Yeah, we just have to wait till all the evidence is in. So in this movie, the way the sudden ice age uh, comes in is that the Gulf Stream just stops. Is that realistic? That part's actually a little bit realistic. And also explain what the Gulf Stream is, what it does, and then why it's realistic. So the, uh, the Earth's oceans have these very large circulations that basically go all around with uh, warm water from the equator moving away towards the, the poles, okay. uh, cools down, and then there's sort of this circulation the other way of cold water, which goes much deeper because like hot water rises to the surface, okay. and cold water goes down uh, on its way back. So there's this, this great big okay. mass of water going around and, and it brings warmth to uh, more northern latitudes. So for example, to Europe, which would be much colder were it not for this circulation. And it can stop if there's too much meltwater going, uh, uh, entering actually in the Arctic Ocean and sort of the north of the Atlantic. So it's, this is actually happening right now. So um, Greenland is uh, melting faster than we are and we're anticipating. With the climate changing so fast, it's just increasing this change. Day by day. Actually, on the uh, God underscore Academy Twitter mm -hmm. uh, follow, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I posted uh, some uh, graphs showing that actually there's now this, I guess, indicators of a slowdown in this circulation happening actually right now. So once it stops, Europe will immediately become colder because you told me this, like Lisbon is the same latitude as New York City, yeah. but way hotter. It's mostly in the winter times, right? I mean, like New York in the summertime yeah. can be really hot. Yeah, yeah. Lisbon also, New York also. But the winter time, that's where the real difference is because in New York, actually, the winters can be yeah. rather cold. Yeah, yeah. And in Lisbon, not so much. And then, the way ice ages kind of work is that there's this runaway process right. where there's more ice being stored and that increases the reflection from the earth which means which means more heat is bounced back into space like ice reflects very well okay. so and it gets even colder 
so and yeah, so you get this uh, sort of chain reaction where mm. it gets colder and colder and colder. It's a bit faster than we thought we knew. And the interesting uh, conclusion of the movie, which was interesting even in 2012, but, but now with the wall and Trump, it's even uh, more uh, powerful, is that... And now, in a dramatic reversal of illegal immigration, thousands of people are crossing the Rio Grande into Mexico. The scene that's unfolding here behind me is one of desperation and frustration. People have abandoned their cars, grabbed their belongings, and they are waiting across the river illegally Mexico. And they're not even put in cages. Not even put in cages, not separated. They, they're treated very, very kindly. Yeah. And they just have to forgive uh, the, the, the debt of uh, Latin America. That's probably fair enough anyway. Yeah, to do <laughs> just now. This is, like, yeah. 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 So volcano. let's transition yeah, to the volcano disasters. So... Why does an underground volcano under Yellowstone, this is a super volcano, yeah. a real volcano that actually exists, yeah. how could that, whatever, destroy the world? Mostly by what comes uh, flying out and uh, all the, the ash particles and the gases okay. and so... It's a volcano! Pff. It's like in Pompeii, you kill just the people over there. How would we be affected by a volcano on the other side of the world? Also climate change. Actually, the volcano will cause climate change. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. So the the ones in Yellowstone, from what we know from history, is that they were basically the biggest eruption. Like it's happened a couple of times, way in the past, and those are basically the largest explosive events that the Earth has ever done. There have been eruptions in uh, in known history, like mm -hmm. in the 19th century. There was one where actually it costs uh, uh, the year without a summer. Uh, so if that happens mm. a couple of times, then you get this uh, uh, climate change kind of chain reaction again. Our planet is very fragile. Well, we are fragile, we are fragile. In, in the face of that, yes. right? Yes. Which I guess is also kind of the point of these movies, right? So they. Uh, like these, these, these events are massive and terrifying, especially because we're in the way, right? Like yeah. if this happens on uh, Jupiter or something. Yeah, nobody cares. For example, in the 90s, there was this big impact on Jupiter of the shoemaker levy. Oh. And like that was just spectacular to watch. And like the astronomists were like, Ooh, look Yay. at this. <laughs> but uh, and that is a scale. If that happens to us, like we're toast, oh, right? No. Throughout the 80s um, and before that, during the Cold War, uh, the West had lived with this this idea of you know mutually assured destruction. The, we can kill uh, each other very well, and this would like wipe out civilization. And then that kind of stopped. So it needed to be turned into right. something, something else, else to still appeal to those fears. Right. In a way, maybe that like. Um, Godzilla came about, let's say, right? So like uh, the Japanese had experienced um, the nuclear attacks on uh, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, and uh, the fire bombings. Right. And so they turned that sort of the scale of these events into kind of a mythical thing. So make it something else more distant so it's not as hard to consume yeah. but subconsciously unconsciously you deal with that right you, yeah. you don't make a movie about a nuclear disaster because that would be too much so you turn it into a monster we have a podcast about it that is almost an hour long we'll put the link in the description if you want to get the in-depth analysis the science the politics everything about it uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Check out our podcast. You can follow it and uh, give it a five star rating if you like it. And thank you, Rutger. We'll see you. We have a bunch more videos coming up. Science, history, do history also in the podcast. So thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel. We'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. The United States government just asked us to save the world. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker.